According to a senior Ukrainian energy official, Russian President Vladimir Putin initiated his war on Ukraine within hours after Ukraine began separating and independently testing its electricity system from a joint grid with Russia and Belarus. In an interview published by the Kiev Post on Tuesday, Deputy Energy Minister Farid Safarov said that Ukraine shared a power system with Russia, Belarus, and Moldova. On February 24, however, it was planned to disconnect Ukraine's electricity infrastructure from Russia and Belarus and test it independently. February 24 at 2 a.m., Ukraine started the testing procedure. Putin started his attack on Ukraine two hours later, Safarov told the Post. According to Safarov, the Russians felt that they could bring the Ukrainian electricity system down by doing so. Even while Russia has intensified assaults on energy systems in recent months, it seems from Safarov's remarks that Putin had the Ukrainian power grid in his sights from the beginning of the war. On Monday, Russia unleashed its latest missile attacks on Ukraine, purportedly causing power outages, human fatalities, and damage to buildings and residences in the war-torn country. Since October, when Putin accused Ukraine of an explosion that destroyed the Kerch Strait Bridge, which links Russia to the annexed Crimean Peninsula and serves as a critical supply route for Putin's soldiers, Russia has conducted several strikes throughout Ukraine. Although Ukraine did not formally claim credit for the explosion, several of its highest ranking officials cheered the news on social media. Officials from the West have harshly denounced Russia's recent missile assaults on Ukraine's electrical infrastructure and facilities during the winter months. In late November, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, accused Russia of attempting to freeze into submission Ukraine's population due to Putin's inability to gain success on the battlefield. Midway through March, engineers were able to link Ukraine to a European energy grid, allowing the country to disconnect its system from Russia throughout the conflict. Safarov lauded the energy workers who successfully synchronized Ukraine's system with the European one. It was predicted that it would take Ukraine one and a half years to do this. Therefore, this was a miracle, he added. Ukraine and neighboring Moldova were connected to the continental European power system. Russia is likely to punish the officers considered guilty for Monday's drone assaults on its airfields, the British Ministry of Defense said. The Kremlin has accused Ukraine of the attacks on two Russian airbases, the Engels 2 air station in Saratov, situated approximately 600 kilometers, about 375 miles, east of Ukraine, and the airbase in the city of Ryazan, which is located southeast of Moscow. Kiev has not claimed responsibility but has applauded the strikes. A senior Ukrainian official claimed Monday that the drones used in the attacks were fired from Ukrainian soil. If Russia determines that the instances were planned strikes, it would likely see them as some of the most strategically important force protection failures since its invasion of Ukraine, according to the UK Ministry's daily intelligence briefing on the conflict in Ukraine. The ministry said that the Russian chain of command would likely attempt to identify and severely punish any personnel guilty of enabling the instances. Monday, the Russian Defense Ministry accused Ukraine of using Soviet-era jet drones to damage Russian long-range aircraft in two separate strikes. According to the department, three Russian military personnel were killed and four more were injured due to the attacks, which destroyed two planes. According to the report, the air defense of the Russian aerospace forces intercepted the low-flying Ukrainian drones. Tuesday morning, a drone strike allegedly targeted a third Russian airbase, according to local authorities. The governor of the Kursk area on the northeastern Ukrainian border, Roman Starovoit, said that an oil tanker caught fire at an airfield in the region but did not immediately accuse Ukraine of the assault. There was no loss of life. The blaze is contained. All intelligence services are there, stated Starovoid on his Telegram channel, adding that he had organized a meeting of the anti-terrorist committee and that the terrorist threat level in Kursk will stay high or yellow for the next 15 days. A Russian Telegram group that routinely shares information about security difficulties in the nation stated on Tuesday that drones attacked a plant in the Bryansk area near the northern Ukraine border. Mikhailo Podolyak, a politician, writer, and negotiator who advises Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, seemed to imply on Monday that Ukraine could attack distant targets. 
If anything is sent into other nations' airspace, unidentified flying objects will eventually return to their place of origin, he tweeted. Russian military bloggers are outraged at Putin's inability to prevent massive airfield strikes. One pundit criticized military officials for demonstrating their complete unsuitability regularly. The Russian military is furious at Vladimir Putin's inability to prevent massive airfield strikes. According to reports, the Ukrainian military on Monday attacked two important airbases. The Institute for the Study of War said that although these events likely caused very little damage, they proved Ukraine's capability to hit Russian rear regions and potentially impede Russia's campaign of strikes against Ukrainian infrastructure. It seems these strikes have also hit a chord among Russian military bloggers. This may erode a little faith in Moscow's leadership. The Institute for the Study of War said that among Russian mill bloggers, anger about the Russian military's failure to prevent Ukrainian attacks on vital Russian airbases over 280 miles from Ukrainian forces outnumbered enthusiasm for the most recent wave of strikes on Ukraine. The failure of Russian authorities to predict and prevent the December 5th drone attacks on the Ingalls II and Dyjalevo airbases was criticized by Russian military bloggers. Certain mill bloggers observed that Russian military authorities had not sufficiently safeguarded the airbases, with some saying that Russian officials did not adequately defend the sites despite knowing they were obvious targets for Ukrainian attacks. The institute also noticed that these critics were prominent on the blogosphere. One author raged on the social media platform Telegram that the sheep in the rear continued to reveal their utter unsuitability. In a post that gained more than 500,000 views, the analyst noted that the tendency of attacks on the airfields of the aerospace forces, and even more so by aircraft with long-range missiles, was evident. The Engels II airfield in Saratov Oblast, about 500 kilometers from Ukrainian territory, and the Dyajalevo Air Base in Ryazan Oblast were reportedly struck by Ukrainian airstrikes, approximately 285 miles from Ukrainian territory. According to the Institute for the Study of Conflict, both bases are home to parts of Russia's strategic bomber fleet, which Russia has deployed throughout the war to attack Ukraine. After the assaults, Russia fired around 70 missiles against Ukrainian sites. According to Volodymyr Zelensky, most of them were destroyed before reaching their objectives. In a broadcast speech, he said 70 Russian missiles had been fired, most of which were intercepted. Every Russian missile intercepted is clear evidence that terrorism can be countered. A picture circulating on social media seems to depict a wrecked Russian bomber, despite the Kremlin's claim that a drone attack at an airbase on Monday caused minimal damage to one aircraft. The photograph, shared by the Ukrainian Air Force, allegedly depicts damage to a 222M3 bomber at the Dyajalevo Airport in the city of Ryazan, southeast of Moscow. The photograph has been circulated via unauthorized military telegram channels headquartered in Russia and Ukraine. Monday's attacks on two Russian airbases, the Engels II air station in Saratov, some 600 kilometers, about 375 miles east of Ukraine, and the Ryazan Air Base, were attributed to Ukraine by the Kremlin. Kiev has not claimed responsibility but has applauded the strikes. On Monday, a top Ukrainian official was quoted suggesting that the drones used in the attacks were fired from Ukrainian soil. The Ukrainian Air Force released two photos allegedly depicting damage to a gasoline tanker and a 222M3 bomber. Blood is seen underneath the picture of the gasoline tanker. Ryazan, Russia. What happened? The Air Force captioned a photograph. Monday, the Russian Defense Ministry accused Ukraine of conducting two strikes on Russian long-range aircraft using Soviet-era jet drones. According to the report, the air defense of the Russian aerospace forces intercepted the low-flying Ukrainian drones. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, three Russian military personnel were killed and four more were injured due to the attacks. It was added that there was minimal damage to the coating of an aircraft. However, the social media image depicts a different picture. A section of the aircraft's rear appeared to have been severed by the explosion. 